Hi, Cobra. Hello and welcome to the print. Hi, how are you doing, Tina? Good. How are you doing? How does it feel to be on the brink of release of your book, which is yeah. a good book, actually? <laughs> uh i think it feels like doing something for the first time so the energy around it is this happy nervous energy uh and little did i expect that little excerpt to reach so many people and like that becoming a conversation uh starter so yeah there's like one end where it's like oh congratulations you are so brave you are so strong and i'm like thank you you're very kind <laughs> and i genuinely mean it i genuinely mean like thank you uh because you don't expect something that you've done with honesty and you just put out there to to actually yield such effortless love and and literally at the end of it you're like there is just a lot of love in the world we just don't see it enough mm-hmm. and yeah like I, i got a message yesterday from somebody saying hey i hope i'm not pushing it but like really just think of me as your father and i'm like thank you that's very very sweet of you thank you um since i have also read that excerpt now and uh, i just wanted to share the favorite line the line that stood out for me i think where you say that uh, you know words are overrated i think nothing comes close to a hug like a really nice hug and i think for people who are reading it who who reached out and you know the one that you mentioned i think they also feel like that when they're reading the book because that would be my honest reader review uh, from whatever little i have read i would just wa- i just wanted to share that thank you Thank you. I am a huge believer of hugs. I genuinely genuinely am. I think I've been a hugger way before hugging became cool. Like we were like people who used to shake hands with people. I used to be the hugger. So I'm like literally the legit hugger of like the first hugger of of like the family. Um so I just wanted to ask you like uh, my focus actually was on the bit that you wrote about how schools sometimes can be actually a deterrent and especially earlier you know now so there is a lot more effort i think schools themselves are evolving a lot there are you know experiential schools there is a lot of effort to make the child comfortable as opposed to uh, you know the system being the more important thing like this is the education system and you've mentioned instances where it ended up you know suppressing who you were as a person so do you think that that is also an equally important conversation starter because yes uh, people who have access to a certain kind of privilege can still send children to these kind of schools because they are definitely more expensive there's no doubt about it but there is an india where you know you're probably just going to send whatever best school according to your budget is and those schools probably still function on a similar kind of level right so do you think this is also an equally important conversation starter where we're looking at the education system which is not forcing kids and it has been in conversation over time of course we even had films which talks about how suppressing a child you know uh, a child being a child often leads to consequences which are not pretty you know a range of consequences actually but i think as a generation now we are the generation which probably sees what happens when you suppress because probably we became that generation you know in the middle of it so i was wondering if you had anything to say about that you know there were two very beautiful things that you said one is a hey, is this a conversation starter and the other thing that you said was a system hmm. i think the minute you start looking at something as a system hmm. then you know it needs to run in a certain way hmm. you know and i think the only people who can really bring a change around that system are individuals so while you know i've had experiences of a failed education system i've had some wonderful teachers as well who've like changed my life for the better mm-hmm. so while i do speak about you know being in a place where i was not recognized or appreciated or allowed to be the person that i am just outside that universe there were these other individual people who were out there to help me be a better human being and there was no vested interest of this mm-hmm. they were just doing what they were doing because they were passionate about it 
And I think as human beings, if we are cognizant and if we recognize that learning never stops, then we can always continue to learn. We can always continue to like be better versions of ourselves. Why wait on like a phone to give us like a version update? Mm-hmm. But the longer that we are in a in a system, so called, like for example, when people say industry, and uh, they speak about um, Bollywood or the film industry, mm-hmm. I always say, but why are we looking at it as an industry? If we look at it as a culture, it's so much fun for people to come and share their two, you know, bits. Uh, the idea is that if everybody flourishes so does the system so does the industry so does the culture so yes i think i am able to talk about it today because i'm in a i'm i'm in a situation today where i'm able to like um you know look at ah okay these were the cards i was dealt and this is how i responded or reacted in those moments to the cards i was dealt what would happen if i was what would happen if i were dealt with like a different set of cards right. or would my reactions or my response be different if i had the same cards dealt to me i think that's where the book comes from mm-hmm. if that allows people to have conversations around it then oh my god i think i think i would find some answers too because you know there is this one um there is this one chapter where i talk about how one of my most desired places to visit is an island called palau mm-hmm. and before you enter the island they make you sign a pledge and one line in the pledge says the only things that i'm going to take from here are memories and what i'm going to leave behind are my footprints mm-hmm. so i think as human beings if we recognize that we are only passing through this earth but at the end of the journey we have to leave this place for someone else so you know whether it's the system that you're speaking about or the culture that we're talking about or this conversation that we want to start and have around us i think at the end of the day we we need to know that we are only passing through so if we can make a change for our immediate ones and make this world better we may not have been dealt the best cards yeah it's not possible that we all are dealt the best cards you know at the end of the day you play a game of uno even then you know your best friend has draw four right next to you like you know what i mean so it's just it, life is a game so i really feel that you can't sit around sulking about what's what's it that you've been dealt with but hey how can i bounce back i think that's been literally what i've been striving for and yeah you just an answer your question though it does in a way because i have <laughs> like a follow up on it actually or leading it to something else actually you just said that the idea that you live by in a way is that the memories that you make and the footprints that you live behind so do you think you've been able to in whatever roles that you've done so far at least in the roles that you've done uh, i'm talking about two that i really like personally one of course is sacred games kuku and the other actually is because foundation happens to be one of the books that i absolutely love and um, so that's something that i was like okay you know finally there is a version of this amazing amazing series so i was wondering if you want to talk about those two roles which are very stand out roles which are not roles that people usually pick up as you said you know my face it. right now i haven't stopped smiling since the start of your question <laughs> wow um yeah no these two are really really important roles not just as like plot points on my career graph but they are also really really significant roles to me in terms of my evolution as a person as well mm-hmm. so while i can you know easily sit around and laugh about it today and say that no 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 sacred games was really not much of a creative decision as much as it was like a work or no work decision and this is something that i've said repeatedly like over the years because people honestly thought that i chased sacred games no sacred games happened to me mm. and there could not have been any other part that could have been more amazing more fulfilling 
uh, yes, of course, challenging, brave, bold, all of that. But I'm saying there could not have been a more beautiful part that allowed me to discover who I am as a human being, but more importantly, make connect with a community that is in conversation every single day of their life just to be identified and respected for who they are. Hmm. And since we are celebrating Pride Month, it never ever goes amiss that Cuckoo is not a part of conversations during Pride Month hmm. or like the rest of the year when we talk about, you know, community, when we talk about their rights, when we talk about, uh, you know, them being seen. So a huge uh, game changer for me personally. Um, and when it comes to Farah, again, that's like an incredible role because to be honest, Farah could have been from anywhere in the world. Hmm. Like it was an open-ended casting, but to acknowledge the fact that there was a test Joseph in Andheri in, in seven bungalows who was auditioning and a round of tests had already already happened. And then I just happened to be one person she hadn't tested. Mm -hmm. And once the ball started rolling, it took me about, I think, six months before I got the part. But to be cued in to get that part was like quite an ordeal in itself. But like, I think what Farah taught me as a human being is that there is so much power in non-judgment. I mean, as actors, we do that anyway with our characters. But we see so many characters that appear appeasing because they're like, because they're simple, plain Jane. Mm. And there was something about Farah that wasn't. She had this resilience. She had this need to fight for what she believed in. She wasn't really fighting for herself. There was nothing left for her to fight. But she was out there to avenge the wrong that was done to like generations gone. Mm -hmm. and, and how generations still today on her planet were suffering. So she actually took the ownership of fighting the empire for the wrongs that they had done mm -hmm. towards her people. And I think when you look at a story in that sense, then you just know that in her right, she's the hero of her story. So you can't judge any hero, no matter where they come from. And even personally, it was a really, really huge uh, learning for me because it was the first time after 2005 that I had lived out of, uh, out of my own house or like a familiar place. Mm -hmm. So for about eight months, out of, I was out of the country. So I was eating their food. I wasn't talking in Hindi. There was no conversation. So for eight months, I had no way to come back home because we were like in the nick of COVID. So I had to stay out of the country. I had no choice to come back. And that gave me so much time to spend with myself that it was a really, really introspective time. In fact, there was a large part of the book that I completed while I was in Ireland as well. Okay. I am going to ask you also about a, up, your upcoming role actually in Farzi. Um, and Raj and Diki, of course, right now are people that so many people want to work with. Uh, as far as I can tell, they've already delivered these hits. I have seen the trailer. Um, and everybody's sort of waiting for the show. So how has it been working with not just Raj and DK, but like this whole team of talented actors? Because they've been drawn in from so many places and, you know, across, I think it's a very fascinating cast in itself already. Yeah. So just wanted to hear more about that. No, I actually haven't worked with most of the uh, cast in Farzi. You know, like the Ill illustrious cast that you speak of. So I'm really excited to see what it looks like on screen as well. But it's a really hush hush uh, part in the show. And I'm really excited to see how it like turns out. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think I have to speak uh, more than I should because their work and uh, their talent like speaks for itself, which is Rajan DK's work. They have an incredible team. They have an outstanding team of writers. Mm -hmm. 
they're two wonderful, wonderful people to work with. And I leapt on that opportunity like a really hungry hound. I can tell you that. I was so excited to know that I was going to be working on a Rajin DK project. So I'm really, really excited for it to come out. I don't know whether anybody knows when it's coming out, but <laughs> I think it's coming out soon. Um, there is another project that I take immense joy and pride in, which is again for Amazon. It's called Sheher Lakhot, which I'm actually filming right now with Navdeep Singh, Priyanshu Penoli, Manurishi Chadda, Chandan Roy Sanyal. Uh, so I'm like really, really excited. It's it's like like it felt like a really slow two years for me because when Foundation came out, I felt like in seven days I'm gonna get Martin Scorsese's call and he's gonna be like, "Hello, when are you gonna work with me next?" And that didn't happen. <laughs> so I just felt like, "Oh my God, nobody noticed me. I'm so lonely. Oh my goodness." And after my pity party, I went back to work and I just felt like work was really slow. I felt like, oh, I wasn't doing enough. I thought I was like, there was a lot of doubt in my own head. Uh, but now that we're inching closer to the completion of certain projects, uh, to the release of certain projects, I'm just getting back into the groove. So I think these two years was a very interesting reset time for all our lives. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to ask, like uh, you know, Sacred Games to Foundation to Farzina, they are all they are all OTT releases, right? Just I wanted to know, like, because we you spoke, like how you know Bollywood is still seen as an industry, and often it's seen as an inaccessible industry, specifically if you're an outsider, if you if you don't know, you know, you're just completely fresh and you want to get it. Do you think somewhere? I mean, fortunately, unfortunately, of course, COVID intervened. Uh, entertainment itself changed so much for Indian viewers. We were so used to those weekly, you know, sometimes for some people daily, <laughs> movie outings and, you know, it was such a new normal. And then we were forced in and then we had this, you know, platforms where we could watch now. Now it was in our house, you could watch anytime. Do you yeah. think that changed also entertainment for Indians? Not so, as much as the viewers, as the actors, because suddenly you could, you were watching things um, which you didn't think could actually exist often, even for Indian audiences. I don't necessarily mean shows from outside that you begin watching that, you know, how now Korean dramas are such a big thing in India. You know, you watching shows like Squid Game. Um, you, you, I understand that those were not things probably you might have watched, you know, unless there was this whole idea, oh, you know, this OTT has this show. But you think even for India, you know, as a large, I don't just mean Bollywood. I just mean every language. You think this is where, you know, a sort of democratic space, a sort of space where everybody could sort of get in and show what they are and how good or bad they are just came about as an, I wouldn't say as an alternative, but as a natural next step to, let's say, bigger, you know, enterprises like Bollywood or other film industries that we have already. You know, there were like parts of the question that you actually answered, uh, you know, in your question itself, which was like the word, uh, the use of the word democratic, hmm. you know, uh, I think the only difference that I have seen is long format versus short format. When you have a two hours to fill a film hmm. with the content and the story and characters, you know, only that much can be seen of that character. Right. And then you take that out of two hours and you put it into like uh, 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 eight episodes of an hour, it's eight hours or 10 hours of content you just exponentially change, you know, the character by itself because now you have so much more time to tell about this character. Mm. So I got really lucky. Like for most people who may still not have watched Sacred Games, right? I am literally in like three episodes or four episodes. Mm. So by no, by no length of my imagination, it's a huge part. But it was the writing that was beautiful. So I think in that sense, when you're able to write about a character, when you're able to flesh its mm. its existence in the plot, uh, that allows us to be like, like just go out there and like take the reins and then just go away wherever you want to with this character. It hasn't been only an amazing time for actors, but also for directors, for like technicians, you know, like there are so many projects happening parallelly as we speak, that mm -hmm. it's insane, like the opportunity that it has created for people. Um, 
am I somebody who still likes to go and watch movies in a theater? Yes, I am. Like, mm. I cannot deny the experience. Mm. I love doing that. If possible, I would go once a week to watch a film in a theater. But I think as an audience member, as a viewer, I know what I want to watch. I know where I want to put my money. Do you remember those good old days when we didn't watch a movie in a theater because we said, two months later, DD2 will come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right now, you don't even have to wait two months. Yeah. Nah, of course. Yeah. It just happens even before that. So you're like, I really want to go and watch this film in a movie hall because I know it guarantees me that experience. Hmm. And I will not negotiate that experience and the value that it generates for me. Right. But if it is something that I can sit at home with my friends, mm -hmm. eat a meal, mm -hmm. pause when I want to, play when I want to, then I'll do it. So I think when we speak about democracy, we're not only being democratic about the kind of people who join this industry or the, you know, the culture of storytelling, but we're also changing the fabric of viewership. Mm -hmm. so Today, your viewer is democratic enough to say, Ke, ah, I don't think I want to go spend that kind of money for that kind of a story, which probably will not, you know, do anything for me. Hmm. Like, I think my last movie was Top Gun, Maverick. And it was so amazing to go watch yeah. a movie that was made 30 years ago. Hmm. I didn't even watch it like when I was like very young when it released you know i watched it when i was like 18 or 19 i was just like oh my lord now i know why my ovaries were on fire <laughs> right and i just felt the same experience all over again going and watching it in the cinema where everybody was laughing on like on the beats and everybody was like clapping on the beats everybody was cheering together and i was like man that's an experience you can't buy in your living room sitting and watching a film or a show on your TV, like in your living room. Can't happen. Since you mentioned that, you know, there is definitely more time for, um, again, a character to develop in a web series as opposed to, of course, a two, two and a half hour screen time, um, which has also, I think, led to this evolution of, you know, parts uh, in cinemas now, like in a lot of films, you have also moved on to, you know, part one, part two, whatever in the series. But I wanted to know what it does as an actor. Like, do you, like, do you think there's more time uh, and space to showcase uh, your contribution or your interpretation of a character as well, like you said, you know, four episodes, of course, is going to give you more screen time. But I don't just mean the screen time. I mean, but there's also there, the, of the character, no? Yeah. So I'm telling you that I, as an actor, can only go out there and add those little extra frills and you know pearls and buttons and all those cool thingies. But my foundation needs to be very strong. Right. And my foundation comes from the writing. My foundation comes from what the writer director have sat and wrote for like maybe two years in their rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm only able to come and add that like, oh, this is my salt bay garnish. Like we try to make the best out of this. And then I'm probably the one who's remembered for doing a good job or I'm the one who's remembered for doing a terrible job. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in that sense, I think I am relying so much on the vision of the writer, the director, the entire team who's putting this together. And I just find them to be really, really generous when they say, who are we doing this for? We are doing it because they will be remembered. Unke liye kar rahe. You know what I mean? So I find that really funny and I find that really privileged in a way. But I genuinely feel that it is such a give and take of energies that it can't be a one-way street. I can't say that I am making something mm -hmm phenomenal of a character if it wasn't there to begin with right um, uh, so i'm just gonna say like this other thing and just kind of like bring this conversation back to the book and that is for me writing this book mm -hmm. was like you know being a custodian of a project entirely on my own it was like an like it was like a true piece of art hmm. where actually when and I bought my notebook and I bought the right kind of stationery that I needed to write with. And then I sat down and I, and today when it's out, I know I'm responsible for every element of it. Hmm. Like I know that I can't walk away with just, 
you know the pat on the back and be like hey you know it's okay it's going to be fine or congratulations you're so brave if something doesn't fly i am going to be the one who also receives like the brick bats and i'm okay with that but i think this is the first time that i've actually taken the ownership of telling a story from my end mm-hmm. and being responsible for it i'm responsible for my choices my decisions that i made in the past and i am very very comfortable saying that i'm over it now it also tells us so much about the cancel culture that we live in right today saying oh my god you made a mistake you're out that's the door oh sometimes we won't even take you to the door we'll just open the window and push you out like go find your parachute on your way down from here like you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think as human beings we've become so less forgiving and so quick to judge that we don't see room for improvement and i am somebody who has been really really privileged with not one i have received many second chances in my life like sara was a second chance for me sacred games was a second chance for me and it could not have happened if i didn't have people who believed in me and that is why i think there was a large part of me not only owed to my career but just as my personal life you know to write down this memoir and not be like oh aren't you too young aren't you too old like yesterday i read this thing saying that the average uh age of the human beings in uh, the urban cities or the urban cultures is going to be 76 years mm-hmm. so i'm like are ho gaya na phir aur like another three decades <laughs> it's not nikal ke abhi wo bhi nikal jayega times <laughs> um this is my last question actually since um you're somebody who again took a leap of faith in a way as well you left your so called cushy job in a way that people say that okay you know everything is going stable you know might as well just stick to this and then you decided to give it up and uh, i think in one of the interviews that i also looked up at some point uh, did say that you know you have said that okay you know i also get bored so a lot of things i have done is out of boredom and yeah and so i was just wondering you know for let's say for an average person who wishes to do something creative something that is out of the box it's not necessarily acting maybe you know for you it was acting maybe for somebody else it could be you know entirely something else would you have anything to say to them like i wouldn't say advice but maybe a life lesson that you have figured out like this is what eventually you know your journey taught you in a way you know apart from the book of course the book itself of course is talking about and documenting that journey but anything else because this is something that most people would see as see i think we judge the outcome of a person's life by kitna successful tha and you know for you also probably that must have been one of the things so i was wondering because of that if you had anything to say to somebody else who may be sitting in their office and thinking okay you know i want to do something different instead but i don't really know how to where to I think nobody ever knows how to where to it's a lot of pressure that more than we put on ourselves I'm telling you I didn't become an actor because I wanted to be an actor I became an actor because other people in Dubai wanted it, me to become an actor they knew I would become an actor they were like are are you going to want me na ha you going to become an actor na you become you become when you become we will see <laughs> and then I became <laughs> and now they don't know where to look <laughs> they're like wow now you're famous i'm like sorry i don't know <laughs> it's true but i think there are a lot of people around you who without your uh how do i say this uh you don't realize that they're actually being the greatest support to you by being your naysayers hmm you know the hard they push you like i so there is like a chapter that i speak about in my book where i went to a place called boyency hmm. now boyency is a made up word hmm. from the word buoyant hmm. which is when you put a ball under water the more pressure that you put the more pressure that it comes out with hmm. and i think i have been someone who's prevented that i don't know if it works for everybody but i'm saying in general when you find yourself 
in a place of extreme doubt extreme pressure mm-hmm. then i think you need to just reassure yourself that at the end of it when you bounce back you're going to bounce higher than everybody else who was trying to put you down that's the only assurance you can give yourself in those moments of extreme doubt because there is no where else to go from the bottom but to go up that's one real solid learning of my life the other thing is that there will be loads of people who will constantly tell you what not to do because it's not safe it's not the path that everybody walks but if you know it and you don't want to give it like your immediate 100% but you drop everything mm. always remember side hustle works mm. because something that you are goddamn passionate about and you love very much you will not bother you know going and spending that weekend doing it it will actually bring you happiness and joy hmm. but i think what happens is that we all have such busy lives hating what we do that we really don't take out those few extra moments where we can actually gain some happiness doing what we love to do so i think if we can like kind of work that ratio out and give ourselves that love then i think we will find directions ourselves and then nobody needs to like sit around there going like hmm magar tumne to nahi kiya ho jayega because nobody comes with like you know it's not like are this hair dye takes 30 minutes to like color your hair <laughs> you know life isn't like that you don't come with a manual you have to figure it out yourself for some it could take like 2 years for some it may take 10 you never know but the idea is if you love something and you genuinely believe you can do it and you love doing it you will do everything that it takes to get better and there is no substitute for hard work there is no substitute for you being prepared for when the opportunity comes your way thank you i had a really lovely time in this conversation it was amazing talking to you